In the news this afternoon, we continue to follow the developing story in Texas City, where officials are scrambling to clean up an oil leak that has shut down one of the world's busiest waterways. The oil poured into the Galveston Bay after a barge and ship collided over the weekend. Joining us now live in the studio to talk more about the status of the spill and what's being done in Gal- is Galveston Bay Foundation's president, Bob Stokes. Mr. Stokes, thank you for joining us today. My pleasure. Good to be here. Well, please bring our listeners up to speed on the status of the cleanup so far. Right. So, you know, the oil spill happened Saturday afternoon, and um, you know, immediately there was a scramble to try to contain the spill from the, from the barge. Uh, there was one tank of the barge uh, that was holding 168,000 gallons of oil, and it was a, a bunker fuel, so very heavy oil. And uh, unfortunately, uh, it completely ruptured, and all of that oil uh, got out from the barge and started heading into Galveston Bay. And um, so as I was saying, there was a, a big scramble a response effort. Uh, we're fortunate in a sense because – uh, we have uh, really the best oil spill response in the country in Houston and Galveston Bay. You know, we have so much uh, industry and so much barge and, and commercial traffic on the ship channel. Uh, there's, there's a lot of training for this. And, um, you know, so we had a, a plan of action, not, not we being Galveston Bay Foundation, right. but certainly the folks who, who work on that. Um, and at least initially, uh, we didn't have very much high wind. So there was an effort to do some containment. But nevertheless, oil was spreading very quickly. But as you recall, uh, Saturday evening, Sunday morning, we had a front go through, Mm -hmm. and it brought a a very strong north wind. And that brought uh, high winds and high waves, Uh, but it was a double-edged sword in one sense because uh, it made it very difficult to contain the oil spill, Um, but it started to push oil out of Galveston Bay into the Gulf of Mexico. Mm, Into open water. Into open water. And so uh, that's not – it really defers a problem, but it kind of sends it out into open water, and so we, at least to date, haven't had a worst-case scenario with, with oil fouling the shores of Galveston Bay and spreading through the Galveston Bay system. If we had had a southeast wind pushing yeah. the oil back up into Galveston Bay, it would be a different story. Ooh, everyone's worst nightmare, for sure. Now, you're talking about containment. What exactly does that mean, and, and what is being done? Well, um, it's, a, it's a multifaceted effort with uh, multiple agencies, uh, ranging from the Coast Guard to the Texas General Land Office, uh, there are private entities response, uh, Kirby uh, Corporation is response, Kirby and La Marine, which, who was involved in the accident. Um, there is Texas Parks and Wildlife Department. There's the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. And what they try to do is they try to uh, surround and collect the oil on the surface uh, mm-hmm. by skimming it. They put booms uh, across sensitive areas, and there's quite a few sensitive areas here. And despite the fact that a lot of the oil is ultimately pushed out of the Gulf, there was still quite a bit of damage uh, done in Galveston Bay uh, around Bolivar Pass. Uh, mm-hmm. There was oil uh, on Pelican Island. There was oil uh, in Big Reef on the east side of Galveston. We've heard that the oil may have made it into East End Lagoon, which is a very sensitive area on the east end of Galveston. We know that there's been impacts to birds. Um, the official number uh, of the from the Coast Guard is, is limited. It was only uh, like six this morning. Hmm. Um, but I think those were six that were found and captured. Uh, actually, about half of those were captured, and, and half of them were already deceased. Yeah. But but we know uh, from from folks uh, that we know well at Houston Audubon that they've documented at least 50 birds that have been oiled. Many of these birds are not uh, caught yet, so they're mm-hmm. they're out there. Uh, they're still able to fly, but ultimately their their health will deteriorate. And uh, it's likely that by the time they're able to be caught, it, it might be too late for those birds. And which way are they going on their migratory path, south or north? Well, so they're all coming uh, from the south mm-hmm. right now. Um, a lot of these are water birds and shore birds, many of whom live here year-round, but there's just a greater number of them here right now mm-hmm. because uh, of the migration. And so they stop over and some stay for quite a period of time. And so um, I know for sure that um, the Houston Alabama folks saw – Oiled birds at Bolivar Flats, which right. is on you know the tip of uh, Bolivar Peninsula, there was no oil that was coming ashore there, so it had been birds that had been moving around somewhere else in Galveston Bay who encountered the oil and brought it back with them. So uh, there's still a pretty significant problem there, and uh, I expect that that will continue, even though there's still uh, you know a lot of the oil is already out in the Gulf. A quick mention here, Mr. Stokes, you mentioned that it was Kirby Inland Marine. Who else was involved? You know, there was a a foreign uh, carrier ship that was involved that was in the main channel of the 
uh, Houston Ship Channel. I, I don't remember the name of the ship offhand, mm-hmm. uh, but it was the barge that intersected with the ship. And, um, you know, no one's figured out exactly why or how that happened. Uh, the Coast Guard will be looking at that as well. Uh, we do know that it was pretty foggy that day. Yeah. And so, you know, one might think that that could have had something to do with it. You know, I mean, this is one of the world's busiest waterways. We know this. And, and the traffic has been impacted. How long do you think something like this would take to contain? Much well, less clean up. Yeah, I mean, I think um, no one knows. Um, yeah. I, I think um, I was looking at the at the online news today before I came over here, and it looks like uh, the Port of Houston and the Coast Guard are looking at at least partially opening up the ship channel mm-hmm. very soon. Um, you know, uh, I think they need to balance uh, all the economic pressure uh, against the the concern that future or additional ship traffic might do additional ecological harm. Right. And I know they're making that balance. Um, but, you know, that's that's one of the balances out there. Um, so m- my thought from just reading what I saw online before I came over here is that there may be some traffic coming in and out fairly soon. Right. Um, you know, it's it's a ter- there's all kinds of uh, terrible impacts from this oil spill, uh, economic for certain, uh, along with the ecological impacts that we've been talking about. Uh, you know, uh, the other thing I'd like to mention is, is you put this a little bit into perspective. I mean, when we talk about the BP Horizon spill is this how much in comparison to the amount of oil that was coming out of there yeah so it's a it's a fraction of the bp oil spill yeah. but if you think about it uh in this context um you know at least when in, when the oil spill happened in galveston bay it was in a very small area mm-hmm. you know the bp oil spill was out in the middle of the gulf and had a lot of open water before right. it came ashore uh this uh, happened very close to very sensitive shorelines and so 168,000 gallons of oil is not an insignificant amount by any means it doesn't mean it's uh, one of the top 10 worst oil spills in the country mm. uh but it is the worst oil spill i believe in Galveston Bay since 1990 so mm. you know almost 25 years and um you know uh we'll hope it's at least another 25 years until we have something this significant do you think the increased traffic that's going on in the ship channel um is partially to blame for this I don't want to ascribe blame on increased traffic at this point in time. I do think there there's some concern that the weather uh, either deteriorated uh, quickly yeah. uh, or that there was bad weather that was potentially ignored. I don't know the answer there, but I think um, w- with our increased traffic that may be coming to the Houston Ship Channel, we have to absolutely be vigilant yeah. uh, and make sure that we don't have this type of accident again in the future. One more very quick question. Sure. I'll let you go. Has there been a call for volunteers, and what, if anything, can people do to help? Right. So... Um, we actually have this memorandum of agreement with the Coast Guard and the, and the general end office to, to manage volunteers, mm-hmm. but volunteers haven't been activated by the Coast Guard. So we're not the one who gets to decide in this particular program whether or not volunteers do have a role or not. We're waiting for the Coast Guard to say they do. Is that because it's too hazardous to put volunteers into harm's way? Right. And so even when volunteers are activated, we're not going to be having uh, volunteers from, from your average volunteer from out in the, in the public come and clean up oil or, right. or clean oil and wildlife. They're going to be doing background tasks. They're going to be doing clerical tasks. So we do want to encourage people to go to our website and sign up to be a volunteer if the volunteers are activated. Yeah. Uh, and again, it wouldn't be necessarily to do that. Um, you know, you're not going to intersect with sure. oil. Uh, and then, of course, you know, there are groups like the Galveston Bay Foundation, Houston Audubon, who are out there kind of advocating for Galveston Bay, involved in the cleanup, and they could always use support. So if people <laughs> want to make donations, uh, you know, I don't want to, you know, tie a donation to a, to a disaster like this, but it does help. You are a great cause. Well, thank Absolutely you. Absolutely a fabulous cause, and everybody should be looking at all the wonderful things that the Galveston Bay Foundation does do. And um, how can they contact you all? Uh, so our website is www.galvbay, G-A-L-V-B-A-Y dot org. And uh, you can also call us if you'd like, 281-332-3381. But we've got a lot of information on our website, on our Facebook page, uh, a lot of updated information on our Facebook page as well. So look for the Galveston Bay Foundation Facebook page in addition to our regular website. Well, Bob Stokes, we know you're one of the busiest men in town right now. Thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate your time. My pleasure. Thanks for the invitation. We've been talking with Bob Stokes. He is the president of Galveston Bay Foundation, and you can contact them at their website at galvbay.com. Org, or by contacting them at 281-332-3381. Thank you so much, Mr. Stokes. Thank you.